Hey everyone, it's Kenji. Uh, right now I'm gonna make myself a green chili cheeseburger. So, green chili cheeseburgers. Well, first I'm gonna start with two chilies. Uh, these are Anaheim chilies. If you can get Hatch chilies, which are um, a specific um, Anaheims that are specifically grown in Hatch, New Mexico. Um, they tend to be a little bit hotter than your standard Anaheim chili. If you can get uh, Hatch chilies, then go with those because that's what these uh, burgers are really traditionally made with. But I just get these Anaheims because that's because I'm in California and not in New Mexico. <clears throat> Although any anybody from New Mexico out there, if you want to ship me some, uh, if you want to ship me from some frozen roasted uh, hatch chilies I will take them um, so the green chili cheeseburger specialty of New Mexico um, the version I'm making is modeled after the one at the uh, Bobcat bite which no longer exists um, but they were sort of one of the archetypical green chili cheeseburgers starting with ground beef um, this is this is about eight ounces I believe the one at the Bobcat bite is actually ten ounces but this you know eight is this is, this is gonna be a burger for two people. Eight is not way more than I can handle on my own, and 10 is just sort of ludicrous, but an eight ounce burger. Um, you want plenty of fat in your burger, um, so about 20% um, fat, 80% lean uh, is what you're going for, so ground chuck works. Um, or if you, know, if you wanna get fancy and do like your own blend, you can do short rib, brisket. Um, at my restaurant, we do a mix of chuck, short rib, and brisket. Um, so when you're forming your patties, you don't wanna really kind of knead it too much and just beef by the way no salt in there if you put salt in your burger patties it makes them um, what it does is it dissolves proteins um, so that they then cross link with each other and it makes your patty much tighter and sort of more rubbery that's how you get a sort of sausage like texture whereas a burger should be much more tender and kind of fall apart um, you want to make your burger a little bit wider than your bun because it is going to shrink a little bit no matter how gently you handle it it's going to shrink a little bit as it cooks um, and then when you form it don't really knead it together too much. You want it to stay nice and loose. So what I do is I get it into a ball, then I put it on a plate or a cutting board, and I just kind of gently shape it with my hands like this, you see. So very little um, motion with it, very very little kneading. Um, and if you can also see, um, it has a slight dimple towards the center. So it's shaped almost like sort of like a, like a red blood cell. Um, and the reason you do that is because what happens is as a burger cooks, um, the parts that cook the most contract the most. And that happens to be this outer edge. And so it's sort of like a belt. What happens is it cinches up like a belt. Um, and, uh, and that's what causes the center of a fat burger to kind of puff out a little bit. It's because the edges are cinching up. Um, and so to compensate for that motion, you want to make the center a little bit thinner. Um, a little bit thinner than the rest of it. That way when it starts to tighten up, it ends up being flat. All right, so just beef. I know people are gonna comment about me not washing my hands after handling raw beef. Um, this is good raw beef. I know where, where it comes from. Um, I know it was where it was before I ground it. Um, so I am not too worried about this is the kind of beef that I would, I mean, if you're, if you're okay eating a rare burger, which uh, you should be, um, well, you don't, you don't have to be, but if you are, then you should be fine handling raw beef and then touching other things. Besides, my hands are going straight into the salt where nothing's going to live anyway. All right, so these chilies, we got them over this real high burner here. Um, if you ever make it out to New Mexico during chili season, what, what they do is they, they pick the chilies and then they have them in these kind of stainless, uh, sorry, these uh, iron tumblers. Um, so they're these kind of, they look like, um, you know, they, they look like they're maybe made of like chicken wire that's wrapped up into a cylinder. Um, and then they put that over a fire, um, like a propane fire, um, or sometimes wood fire, but usually propane fire. They have, you know, these chili roasters and they kind of tumble them around, sort of like um, one of those machines where you pick uh, the lottery ball out of. Um, <clears throat> and you do that until they're kind of blackened on all surfaces. And then you carefully peel off the skins, and we're going to do all that right now. Um, you peel off the skins, and then uh, most people, what they'll do is they'll freeze them. Um, once, they're, once they're roasted and peeled, they'll freeze them and use them out throughout the rest of the year, or they'll freeze them and sell them. Um, in this case, we're just going to use it fresh. So you really want it to get nice and black all over. Whew, it's hot. You know what I'm going to do is I'm going to run in and grab some tongs. These tongs are my the newest addition to my kitchen collection. Um, these are from Early Wood, which is, you might have seen me using some of their like flat spatulas. Um, and I, I definitely, I posted a video, I posted a photo on my, um, in the community section of my channel showing um, when I was re-oiling all of my Early Wood tools. Um, they are a wonderful company. They're based out of Colorado. 
They make um, really beautiful tools, handmade, out of really nice woods. Um, I find them gorgeous and functional, uh, and they're just a generally good company. They um, Good customer service. I would highly recommend their tools, and I would highly, re highly recommend interacting with them. These things are great. They, uh, they work really well. <laughs> That's what, what more could you ask for in a tool? All right, so the only other ingredients for our green chili cheeseburger, we got our patty, and then we got, um, so at the Bobcat Bite, they use, uh, I believe it's Swiss and American, like a combination of Swiss and American. Um, I'm gonna do Swiss and pepper jack because I like pepper jack. So I'm gonna do one slice of Swiss, one slice of pepper jack, and then the only other thing is a bun, um, which is gonna get toasted. Um, you know, some green chili cheeseburgers in, uh, New Mexico um, are of a different variety. They have what they are is like a burger. They're kind. They're kind of like almost like a um, like a pambazo or like a um, torta um, ahogada. So like a, a sandwich that's soaked in chili. Um, so you'll get a you'll get a cheeseburger and then they'll put a spoonful of like a ladleful of green chili um, over it, which is a entirely different thing from the this type of green chili cheeseburger. Um, you also see that in. Um, in Pueblo, Colorado, uh, there's a there's a f famous burger called the Pueblo Slopper, um, which is as sloppy as it sounds. It's basically just a cheeseburger put on a plate with a pile of a handful of mel of handful of shredded cheese, and uh, and then a ladle of green chili um, green chili sauce on top of it. It's um, you know it's a thing. It's a thing. Don't need to say too much more about it than that. I enjoy things. All right, we're getting close. You can see as the chili roasts, um, the skin is gonna start to pull away naturally. Um, chili's getting close enough that I'm gonna now put this, I'm gonna now put this burger on there. So once these chilies are roasted, um, and what you're looking for is for the skin. So you can see the skin is like blistered all around here, but here there's still skin that's kind of attached to the, um, the rest of the chili. You want all of the skin to be blistered because if it's not blistered, it's not gonna peel off. Um, and when chilies, when the skins don't peel off, they are never quite as appealing as when the skin does peel off. <clears throat> all right, this guy's, this guy's real close, blistered all over. Let me just stand them up like that to get that last, last little bit. All right, I think we're blistered all over. So you are gonna go right in there um, and then covered just like that. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna let the, um, the steam the chili is going to steam in there, and uh, and what's going to happen is that the steam is going to help the skin separate from the flesh even better. So while that cheeseburger finishes cooking, these chilies are just going to steam right here. All right, let me give that burger a couple flips. I might speed up all this action because um, I know it's. Uh, as exciting as watching paint paint dry, right? Um, this tool, people have asked me about this table. Um, uh, this is a custom table. I built it myself. It's um, Douglas fir. Um, double, the entire table is made of four by four. So one, I think it was like one uh, 12 foot four by four that I cut down into three into four three, uh, three foot legs. Um, and then the rest is um, uh, two by sixes. These are all two by six Douglas fir. Um, I used a jigsaw to cut out a hole to fit the, uh, the grill, griddle into it. There's no protection between the griddle and the wood, um, so the wood gets a little charred around the edges, but I think it's gonna hold up fine. Um, underneath I built, you know, there's supports, obviously, for the tabletop and for the skirt. Um, and then down here, this is all, these are all redwood slats. Um, and then the rest of this frame is done with two by fours. Um, all Douglas fir and redwood. Um, and then this bar I got from Ikea. This uh, little shelf here I got from Ikea. This bottle open here I got from, I don't know, somewhere. Online, probably. Let's let that first side go a little longer. Get a nice char going. 
Um, and then I finished it off with um, Dex Sealant. So um, Dex Stain and Dex Sealant. Uh, I can't remember what the brand is, but it was it was whatever like Home Depot's previous brand of Dex Sealant was that they no longer sell because I think the company that makes it was going out of business. So I bought buckets and buckets of it. So now whenever I have an outdoor project, I have this Dex Sealant I can use on it. Right. I'm gonna let that first guy go. Just a teeny tiny bit more. So you see how this burger is like really um, loose? Um, that's a good sign. That's a sign that you didn't overhandle your burger. <laughs> I put this um, hard seltzer over on this table initially because I was kind of embarrassed to be seen drinking it, but you know what? Screw it, they're refreshing and delicious. I like good beer, but I also like hard seltzer. All right, burgers there. Not quite ready for the cheese. I mean, I'm gonna toast the bun over here now though. And now we're gonna go in here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna... <clears throat> All went well. Yep, see the skins come right off. Simple. Now, one thing you don't want to do, one of the cardinal sins of uh, pepper roasting and pepper peeling is that you don't want to rinse them underwater to get that skin off. Um, because what you do is you end up rinsing away the kind of smoky flavor that you get from that charred skin, which is a real essential part of the flavor of these things. Um, when I'm making a, a sort of a, a, you know, like a wet chili, you know, like a chili verde with like meat in it and stuff, uh, like a braised dish, what I'll actually do is I will put these in a bowl of water or a bowl of stock. Um, and peel them with the aid of that water or stock because it actually does help and makes it much easier to peel them. And then I end up getting even more flavor because then the peels are in that stock and when I strain it out, I kind of have like a pepper skin tea, um, you know, made from the stock. It, it infuses that smokiness into the stock and so you end up with uh, even more flavor than you would if you were to not use it um, than if you were to just peel the peppers by hand. So. In dry applications like this, like for when I'm putting this on a burger, if I was going to put this in an omelet or in a quesadilla or something, um, no water. But if uh, if I'm doing it on a for a wet application, uh, that's when I use um, I put them in water while I'm peeling. All right, cheese is going to go on. Oops, cheese is not going to go on. The chili is going to go on first. My bad. So these I'm gonna cut into strips. Roasted chilies like this are excellent in tacos and quesadillas. Rajas they're called in Mexican Spanish. All right. Give it a little chopper, chopper roux. I'm gonna get some of these onto our burger they go. Sacrifice a few of them to the grill gods, and then cheese on top. Ooh, look at that nice toast. I gotta say, this is all looking, it's all coming together as well as I hoped. Close this for one second just to let that cheese cheese do its thing. Uh, 
Look at that. How's that look to you? Let me get my camera in a better angle. Yeah, look at that. Can you even see? All right. No, now my camera's too high. Here we go. That's what we're looking for, huh? I'm gonna take a picture with my camera <laughs> just for a habit for the uh, the thumbnail. Hmm. Oh boy, is that good. Alright, just one more bite. I cannot eat this whole burger. I will go share it. Hmm. Those green chilies are smoky, sweet, grassy, a little spicy. Alright, I'll have one more bite. Shabu! Shabu, come on! Yeah, I knew you'd come running. Yeah, here you go. Sit. Oh boy. Alright, I'll see y'all later. <laughs>